And so for projectile motion, your acceleration in the x direction is equal to zero, your acceleration in the y direction is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared. The negative comes from the fact that you pick up speed heading downward. Your velocity becomes ever and ever greater negative number as time goes by. Notice that these three equations come right off the page before. Okay, those three are these three. So the man stands on the roof of a building of height 13.4 meters and throws a rock with a velocity of magnitude 30.1 meters per second at an angle of 33.2 degrees above horizontal. That looks like this. Okay, so here's the angle at which he throws it, and this is the velocity vector. Okay, so this would be the velocity vector that looks like this, v naught. Okay, and it's a vector. I'm drawing that hat over it on purpose. So what we have to do now, regardless of what all else the problem asks, is to break this into components. So this has an x component that looks like this, v naught x. This does not get an arrow over it. I see a lot of people kind of randomly using the vector signs. This is a vector. It has two components, x and y. This just is the vector component, or the x component, so it doesn't get an arrow over it. This is equal to 30.1 times the cosine of 33.2 degrees. 25.19 meters per second. That's the initial velocity in the x direction. And guess what? The velocity in the x direction does not change because gravity doesn't operate in the horizontal direction, only in the vertical direction. So this is constant, which means Vx at the end, your final x velocity, is also equal to this. Okay. So the next step is to find the y component. So the y component, and here's our right triangle, the y component is the one that's going to change. The initial velocity in the y direction is going to be 30.1 times the sine of 30. 3.2 degrees, and that comes out to be equal to 16.48 meters per second. So for part A, we want to find the maximum height above the roof that the rock reaches, which means this is going to follow a trajectory that looks something like this. Excuse my horrifying artwork. It won't cross that. So this is the maximum height above the ground, above the building that it reaches. You're interested in this value. Um, a lot of you actually found the distance all the way to the ground, and, it, and at least that was a step in the right direction. This is what the problem is actually asking. So if you have identified the bottom of the building, or ground level, is zero, and this as, this is your starting point, 13.4 meters, then this is what you're going to be interested in finding. Okay. So, and then the last part is to find where it actually lands and the velocity at which it hits the ground. Okay. So, what's special about this point? It might not give you a whole lot of information about that point, but we do know that our velocity in the y direction at that point, at the maximum point, is equal to zero. Okay. So at the maximum height. Okay, so that is going to be true in every single problem. So let's take a look at how to actually do this then. All right. All right, so for part A, we are going to... Um, so we have V naught X and we have V naught Y. And we want one of these equations that has v naught x or v naught y. We know v y is zero at the very top, and we know a y. So if we wanted, we could find the time, although that wasn't critical to the problem. Let's see if we can do this in one step. Let's pick an equation that gets us there the easiest way. Here we've got an equation that relates the velocity at the, at the top at any point, and we chose specifically the the maximum height. So this is equal to zero. This is equal to 16.48. And here we have 
um, negative 9.8, and this is the value that we want to find. So let's try that equation. Okay, so vy squared is equal to v naught y squared plus 2ay y minus y naught. And take a look at your picture because this value right here, y minus y naught, is going to be the height above the building. And that's, that's what we want, the height above the uh, roof of the building. Okay, so v not, or vy is equal to zero because that's, at, that's true at the top. It's still moving in the horizontal direction, so vx is not zero. Um, v not y, we already found, was 16.48. So we've got to square that. Don't forget that part. 2 times negative 9.8. And then the height above the building actually is y minus y naught. So let's just put in for now y, which is unknown. Y naught is where it started, which is 13.4. Okay, so when you do all this out, you find the height above the ground. And that comes out to be... 27.26 meters above the ground. Okay? But what you really want is the height above the building. So let's subtract off that 13.4 meters, which is the height of the building. So the height above the building comes out to be 13.86 meters. So the trajectory, as we saw before, is a parabola that's shaped like this. Okay, and part B is asking us to find the velocity vector as this thing strikes the ground. It doesn't mean what is the velocity after it hits the ground. I saw a lot of people just kind of put zero and hope for the best, which is not the case. I don't know about you, but whenever I've dropped something on my foot, it is not going zero miles an hour when it hits my foot. It definitely hurts way more than that. So what we want is to figure out the vector that looks like this. Okay, so that is the velocity vector as it hits the ground, and it's going to have an x and a y component. So here's the y component, here's the x component. Sorry about this terrible drawing, but there's my diagram, my right triangle. So here is vy component, and here is the vx component. But we already saw the vx component doesn't change, because gravity doesn't change the velocity in the x direction. Okay, so whatever you found here, for v naught x, it's equal to vx at the end. And then vy is the one that changes. So that's your velocity vector. In order to solve part b, you have to find both the x and the y component. Okay, so let's erase this and go back to actually solving the problem. All right, so what we want is to find an equation that relates the things that we know and the things that we would like to solve for. We want to solve for the final velocity in the y direction. We want the velocity at the end, we know the velocity where it started, we know the acceleration, and we know where it lands in the y direction that we define that as zero, and this is the height of the building. So this equation right here is a great one to use to try to solve this problem. Let's see what we get. Okay, so vy squared equals v naught y squared whoops, v naught y squared plus 2ay y minus y naught. And I'm going to plug in all the numbers that we know. So this is what we're trying to solve for. So that's going to equal 16.48, our initial velocity squared, our initial velocity in the y direction, 2 times negative 9.8, and it lands on the ground at position, vertical position zero, and it started at 13.4 meters. So when you solve all that out for Vy, Vy is equal to 
it's going to turn out to be plus or minus um, 23.11, but we know it's going down 23.11 meters per second. I'm choosing the negative root of this when you take the square root. And the reason I'm doing that is because when we go here, we know that it goes like this, and the final velocity vector looks like that. Okay? All right. So that means that we have to find, or that Vy is this. Okay, so that 23.11 meters per second is equal to that part of the triangle. Okay, Vx is what we found before. It's going to be this part of the triangle. So I'll let you write that down for a sec before I erase it. And I'm just going to write big here. Okay, so if our final velocity vector, I'm just going to draw this really big so that you can see what I'm doing. Here is Vy, that 23.11 in the negative direction. Here is Vx, happens to be equal to v naught x because it does not change. v naught x was 25.19, or 20, yeah, 25.19 Vy we found just now which was equal to 23.11. And I'll leave the negative on here just for consistency. What we need to find is the length of this Pythagorean theorem. So the magnitude of V, and I'll write it out in all its glory, is related to these two components by the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so when you put those in, v, the magnitude of v, and we can write that as just little v if you want, is going to be equal to 34.2 meters per second, and that's accurate to three digits. Okay, it doesn't ask you to find the angle. All right, so I'll give you a second to write that down and understand where it comes from, and... Now what we need to do is to find how far from the base of the building does the rock strike the ground. So as we saw before, it comes up, does this, lands on the ground here, and now we want to find that distance x. Okay, so how to do that? This equation says the position where you land is equal to the position where you started plus the speed where you started times the amount of time that elapsed, plus a term that accounts for the acceleration, which we don't have in the x direction. So it's basically distance equals speed times time. So that means we have to find the amount of time. So the easier way to do that is to use this equation. We know the speed at which we ended. We can pull that out of part b. We know the speed at which we started, and we know our acceleration. So let's use that to try to figure out how much time elapsed. It allows us to solve for that. Vy is equal to negative 23.11. The negative is really important there. V naught y was equal to 16.48. And Ay is equal to negative 9.8. And then you have t, and you can solve for t pretty easily. T is equal to 4.040 seconds when you solve out all the algebra. Now that you have T, now you can find the position from the base of the building where the rock strikes the ground. So let's just do that. And we're using this equation, but like I said before, this equation reduces down to distance equals speed times time. Okay? So let's use this, but this equation, that's zero. The position, it doesn't tell us anything different, so we can say that's zero. So all we have left here is distance from the base of the building is equal to the speed times the time. The speed in the x direction was 25.19. The time elapsed was 4.040 seconds. The position on the ground where it lands, rounded to three significant digits, is 102 meters.